So Jamie Quinn, uh, experienced journeyman. 27 years of age. And uh, well, he's due to have another contest scheduled on Friday. So, well, we know what that means, Conrad. His imperative will be not to be stopped in this contest. And well, Jeff and Foray, if there's anything we've seen of him, until he can punch a little bit. That will make for an interesting conundrum for him. And we've got his opponent, King Jeffrey of So Jeff 3-0 with one stoppage. But we know he can punch a little bit. And he's had a couple of opponents that have been reticent to engage with him as a result of being a puncher. But he's looked pretty good so far. We'll, we'll see how it goes with Jamie Quinn. Obviously, Jamie is very experienced, um, so he's not going to let Ofori get, you know, get too close to stop him. I feel. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, he's been in with the likes of Trey Foxen, Jason Easton, Boy Jones Jr., Zelfa Barrett twice, and uh, well, none of them have stopped him. So if Jeffrey Ofori could do that tonight, that would be a real, real statement from him. Both guys look in great shape, very lean, ready to go. So 6-3 is at lightweight. The fourth contest here for Jeffrey Afori. He was here for his debut back in May. Flashy and clinical stoppage over Swindon's Joe Beden. And he's racked up a couple of points wins since then. Very likeable character outside the ring. And his last opponent, Nadine Chowdhury, took some real heavy artillery, dictionary definition of the baptism of fire for Chowdhury. And he said he put a hell of a training camp in for that before he, and he said this one's been even better. So, as we say, his opponent this evening, experienced journeyman Jamie Quinn, and um, not been stopped by a number of high-profile names. And as you say, we know he's... He's got a scheduled contest Friday, so his imperative will be not to be stopped. So Foray's imperative is to try and make a statement. So really, we could be in for... Saying that, though, Quinn has not seemed to be running away. He's standing his ground and even moving slightly forward. And I suppose he's maybe done a bit of research, knows the kind of reputation of Foray's got at this stage. And, well, he's got to try and earn his respect because he can't let him walk all over him. Otherwise, he's going to give himself a really, really tough night. So maybe... His uh, plan is just to try and earn his respect early, just give himself a little bit of space, but he's pretty defensively solid, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's catching all the shots on the guard at the moment. Four is just having a look and trying to unpick again the guard. Well, it's a, a six-rounder, remember, so Four has got a little bit more time to... That's right, with six rounds, there's no real rush here at the start. He won't be in any rush, and he's been sparring ten in training he said just as the 10th round approaches in sparring he just starts to feel the fatigue and starts to feel that burn and so he says he knows he's capable of of going eight or nine really solid rounds and i think he's just letting the engine develop at this stage isn't he? he's uh, just caught him with a nice little body body shot there yeah 
Yeah, you see Quinn, can't you there? Just nice and high, tight guard, relaxed, stiff right hand. Nice overhand, yeah. Straight down the pipe there. Good condition too, Quinn. Flory bangs away to the body. Uppercut through the middle as well. It's definitely a good fight. Um, so far, they're, they're both landing shots, which is good to see. Looping overhand right from Quinn there. And before he knows that he could start to make a statement by stopping people, but I'm sure he also appreciates the value of getting a few good rounds in. You don't want to stop everyone too early, otherwise you don't learn any lessons. I think eventually people don't want to fight you either, right? Absolutely, especially at a stage where maybe you're not selling a huge number of tickets. And at the start of the career, definitely, most definitely. Absolutely. The financial reward for boxing somebody dangerous is... Uh, well, it doesn't really, doesn't really add up, does it? And you, you tend to get a lot of fighters pull out or, or not get back to you and you make phone calls. Therefore, he needs to try and find the, night, the right balance between not being one of those guys, but also building himself a solid enough reputation that people start to come to watch him and people start to talk about it. That's it. And I mean, also, you know, at the start of your career, you're, you're not fighting the top-level guys. And if you can knock them out, you know, how much are you really learning from that? So sometimes it is, you know, more important to slow it down box out some rounds and, and learn you know learn your trade well, he's got his sights set on the southern area title this year before eight currently held by Juman Camaro from Mitchum it's a, a packed division domestically the likes of Luke Campbell Anthony Crawler Ricky Burns Tommy Coyle and a number of live contenders vying for places in the top 10 outside of that Mitchell Smith the Apple Yard Tom Stalker and it's early days, busy, but busy what, division. Yeah. It is a busy division, and it's early days. But there are signs, aren't there, Conrad? That he's a special young fighter, Jeffrey Afore. No, I mean, you know, very composed, very controlled, sharp, powerful shots. Certainly evidence, although early days, to to call it that he he's got the potential to start getting in the mix in that top twenty. Certainly in the next year. Quinn is not making it easy though. He's he is standing there and he is throwing back. So uh, Ofori needs to be needs to be uh, careful. It's something I noticed about uh, Arthur Abraham a few months ago when he tucks up. He's got those really pointy elbows that kind of stick out as he brings the the guard high and tight forearms that seem to go on forever. And actually, it's a, a trait that Twi that Quinn has got too. Difficult to try and stick that jab into the body when you've got kind of two. Or even the uppercut, you know, you don't you don't want to hit the elbow, it completely destroys yeah. your hands. Very, very prominent elbows, Quint. Making him defensively very hard to uh, to breach. Whoa, comes back with a stiff left hook and a four he smiles, comes back, shuffles in with a jab too. Didn't quite connect that hook though. I think it kind of landed sort of between the chin and the chest. But Quinn is uh, acquitting himself really well thus far. Definitely. I mean, you know, this is this is what you want to see as a spectator. You want to come down and see kind of both fighters go for it, you know. Even this early in the, in someone's career. Lovely overhand. Clubbing shot from a four in there. That got through. Now left hook to the body. Good work from him. Just a little bit of variety upstairs, then down. Good sure. try, good try. Didn't quite land, but... Definitely versatile, lots of different shots from different angles. Managed and promoted by Mo Pryor. And, uh, Pryor also managing uh, Elliot, Mathlu Elliot Matthews, newly crowned English middleweight champ, 20 and 0. Pryor's got big plans for. Afori, as we say, just uh, looking at that southern area title, but he said he might actually have a look at dropping down to super featherweight if he gets to that level, seeing what other options are there. He looks pretty lean at this weight, though, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know how much he's got to come off, really. He might have to shave the beard off. <laughs> shave the beard and lose the socks. That's a... well, he's banging away to the body well so far, Afori. No, he's, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see he's working the head, he's working the body. And he's having more and more success as it goes on. Made some good adjustments in between rounds one and two. That was good work from him. Zelfa Barrett, of course, currently the English super featherweight champ. 
Archie Sharp in that division as well. So really, whether he moves down or stays where he is, there's plenty of decent boxes out there for him. Definitely. I mean, it's not going to be easy for him either way, but lots of good fights potentially in the future there. Absolutely. Lion Woodstock, of course, the Midlands area super featherweight title then went jump straight to a WBO European title. So proof that winning a Southern area title at this kind of level indicates that suddenly you're on the radar of, of all the other boxers in that in that uh, division. I think also, you know, if you haven't had, if you're not sort of a prolific amateur, then it's definitely a good way to, to make a name for yourself. Well, it's certainly a name that's just causing a few small ripples throughout the boxing community of 4A. And I think when you see a name crop up a number of times that you start to recognise, that's a good sign. And you'll be looking to progress fast and with intent over the next six to eight months. And having, you... a, having a little look here of Ori. Bit of a faint. Just a, a slight adjustment of pace too, of course, with the six rounds. Yes, it affords you the luxury of a little bit more time to get the stoppage or break your opponent down. You've also got to make sure that you don't uh, adjust so much that you've slowed right down and give your opponent more more recovery time than they really should have. Just digging in that uppercut under the elbows again. That's right, he doesn't want to hit that elbow, but he's, he's finding the target there. But yeah, the pace has definitely slowed down in this one. Again, another nice body shot under the elbow there. Good, nice try with the uppercut. For he's just holding his ground, isn't he? Just trying to hold his feet, not be pushed backwards. And that's good work from him. I think I think he knows he doesn't want to end up on the ropes because uh, Fori is going to be a lot more dangerous there as well. Fori just steadily but surely fainting him back onto the ropes. And Quinn knows as soon as his back touched it, started to move laterally, trying to give himself some space. But Fori's not letting him off, cutting off the ring well. Just clubbing stiff overhand right from Quinn. And he just knows that he... I think Afori just moved enough to make that not really land cleanly, though. He's got to try and hold his ground, Quinn, hasn't he, though? As soon as he starts getting pushed back onto the ropes more regularly and spending more and more time there than he wants to, that's when he's going to potentially find himself in trouble. But he's doing well to just hold his ground so far. He's got a much wider base than Afori. I think it's, it's giving Afori more to think about rather than just, uh, you know, if Quinn was uh, just moving back for he would definitely have a lot easier and a lot easier night a lovely sharp strong jab from a Fori. and again that body uppercut hook it's finding his target more and more so work Quinn over isn't he just with volume and intensity buzzing around changing angles high and low and this is really nice for oh, the it's, it's an industrious approach. And Quinn, just a wry smile, but uh, this is working for him before. A really nice stuff from him. That's it, very versatile. He's really, I mean, you could see him looking for the openings. We draw to the end of round number three. And before he's just glancing over, he hasn't taken his eyes off his opponent. He just wants to know if he's hurt him at all. How Quinn is feeling at the end of that one. Really nice wind up towards the end of round number three there. Quinn is, uh, Quinn is breathing a bit harder there in the corner. He was just made to work, wasn't he? I think before he realised that he was using a few of those old pro tactics to just kind of hold his ground. He was fainting a little, keeping the Fori from coming forwards. And he was doing really, really well to actually stay off the ropes and, and not look like he was putting too much effort in to do so. As soon as the four, he just bit down on the gum shield, took a few risks and started firing away. That's it. I, I mean, I have a feeling now that a four is just going to go through, up through the gears and, you know, just there's going to be more and more shots landing now. Let's we'll see how Quinn handles that. Yeah. So round number four now. A four, eight. 
Just controlling, uh, controlling Quinn with the jab. Of course, condition-wise, he'll know just what kind of pace he's able to sustain at this stage of his career. And uh, maybe he's just content to start the early portions of the round off with just a bit of movement, the jab, controlling things, and then just try and wind things up to stick in the memory of the judges and see what Quinn's made of. That's it, like do most of his work towards the end of the round and, and just win it convincingly. Oh, oh, just got caught on the counter there. Yeah, just got to be careful, isn't he, as he, as he comes in. Because the double-edged sword of being the aggressor. Quinn, again, just doesn't want to relinqu relinquish any more space, does he? Just backs up. He has, he has got good head movement, Ofori, but I feel that maybe he could keep his hands up a little bit higher just to be that, you know, that bit safer. It's not be really getting caught with much, but... It's always interesting with these journeymen who've been in with a lot of the kind of up-and-coming prospects, isn't it? I always think it'd be a fascinating sit-down interview with one or two of them because really they can give you the inside scoop on how hard guys are punching, who's got the best kind of movement and, uh, you know, really who who they think are going to be the ones to watch because it's all very well speculating, but actually some of these journeymen who've been in with... That's it. They, I mean, they know, right? They've been hit by those guys and they've had to deal with that. With that kind of guy in front of them. Absolutely. But Quinn is no pushover here. He's still attacking, he's still uh, countering. And here he comes out with a double jab. But it's just not quick enough before he is. Nice work from the four eight. Just a left hook counter glanced and to exchange grins at each other. Nice bit of sportsmanship, and I think they're both enjoying this. Glancing uppercut again comes off the front of the guard of Quint. Momentarily moves Philly shell, then flicks out a jab of his own. So Fori, who's now just being patient, maybe looking to counter, just sitting on the edge of punching distance, trying to draw a lead from Quint. I don't think he's going to do that in a hurry. I think he's a, he's a happy pot shot in a way there, really, at the moment. Blocked the, block the hook there from Quinn. The round four ticks by without too much by way of incident. And before he, from where we're sitting, at least, Conrad, clearly in control at the moment. Yeah, no, most definitely. Um, Quinn is definitely in there still. He's still, you know, he's still fighting, and uh, he's still, you know, cause, uh, you know, causing him some some little problems. But no, before he's definitely winning so far. Before he's starting again with the little range testing jab. I think he's trying to set up the loop in right hand there again. Well, it's been good for Forey to have somebody in there in front of him that hasn't just folded or looked like they were on the cusp of folding like so many of the others. And Quinn just uh, a cut above some of the opposition so far in terms of toughness and defensive abilities. That's it. I mean, as a, as a sort of uh, fighter early in your career, I think you learn a lot more from, that, from this kind of fight. Yeah. And someone, you know, pause, uh, cause some problems for you. And also just a, a reality check for him too, I suppose, because there are going to be stages where he goes up and can't just bully everyone around the ring and he's getting a measure of just what level of toughness is out there. And that's Quinn true. just holding firm, absorbing the firepower that's kind of put most other fighters back onto their heels. And whilst the four he's had moments in this contest, he's not had it all his own way and he's not uh, just not bowling Quinn over. And That's right. I mean, no, you. I, ooh, that was a good body shot by Quinn. Just dug straight in, didn't he, out of the blue. But, uh, there's a few and far between for the man in the sky blue shorts, but nice combination, and we felt it here ringside. 
I think Afori is definitely winning the fight, but um, yeah, no, Quinn, you know, is just showing how tough he is. He can take his shots. He can, you know, he can stand there with with a lot of tough fighters. Afori just buzzing in and out of range. Considerably smaller man too, Afori. And um, maybe he's very, very comfortable at the weight. As you say, he's very, very lean. Doesn't look like that's a great deal to come off but actually Quinn is he's very lean at the weight too but he's he's clearly a, a kind of head and shoulder bigger than a foray so I don't think super feather would actually be a problem he's pretty slight of frame yeah it'd be interesting to see what he actually weighed in at I guess a couple of pounds under or certainly comfortably under both both guys landed nice shots there of course, worth bearing in mind that Fori carrying a little bit of power at lightweight, so it's super feather, that would transfer well and uh, could see him be an even more prolific puncher. Uh, you know, the question would be you know, how easily he makes that weight. Because um, sometimes, obviously, that can, you know, take, tire you out and take some of that power away. But, but no, definitely. If he can make that weight easy, then he'd be a very dangerous guy that way. Bit of love from the nose of uh, Afore. Better round from Quinn. Well, his new trainer said they've been working on sitting down on his shots, putting himself in better positions to transfer the power that and has been part of his reputation amongst sparring partners. All of them have said, yes, he can really punch, but his knockout ratio on his record doesn't suggest the same, only two from 13, but he's been working more of turning through those shots and we're going to see a really different version of Tony Milch coming up just after this one. So Before he needs to not get lazy, just got caught with a couple of jabs. Just a bit of blood from the nose of Afori and, a, a, well, I think a good, certainly not a gut check for him, I wouldn't go that far, but just nice... Uh, a nice wake-up call that there are some decent fighters out there and this is the kind of thing you can look forward to when you want to start going up the levels. Really, really one-sided first three contests and, well, he's certainly been in charge here, but he's had a, a bit of stiff resistance to break down and some fire coming back at him too from uh, Jamie Def Quinn. Definitely a good learning fight again for Ofori. Missed by much with that left hook there. Again, a four. A nice right hook round the back of the gloves. Quinn again lands one of his own, just ties him up. He seems to be trying to time out a four his jab. Quinn. And yeah, it seems to be having some success. There we go, nice. He walked into the overhand right again from Quinn. And actually, the more I think about it, the more he does look considerably the smaller man in there. And he's done well to still try and be the boss of most of these exchanges, still try and push it, Jamie it, Quinn it, back. It takes a lot out of you when you're fighting sort of the bigger guy, you know, even just hitting the bigger man, it can, it can take a lot of energy away from you. So he's definitely having to work hard. Quinn beckoning him on here. He's a, Quinn is definitely a tough guy. He's taking all the shots. He's a tough guy and defensively cute as well, isn't he? Just keeping those hands high. Difficult to penetrate that guard. And Afori has taken the bait and said, OK, you want me to come forward? I'll come forward. Yeah, we've, we've definitely got a fight on our hands now. Just in the middle of a, a little mini York call classic here. And just fueled a little by the crowd as Hughes was uh, Quinn rather was bit just of a found wild, wanting. Bit of a wild shot there from Quinn. Didn't find the target. But really, really entertaining six rounds between these two. Jamie Definitely. Quinn will box again next Friday. And Jeffrey Foray, I think, will fancy himself a wide winner on these scorecards. But uh, 
a good litmus test for him in his fourth pro contest. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, even very entertaining. Very entertaining to watch. Jeffy, congratulations. You knew that guy was going to be tough. Just tell us how tough he was. Um, he had a very good guard and he pushed me, man. I finished it. I got pushed very hard in this fight and I wasn't tired necessarily. It's just I couldn't find my shots, but it's just something to work on. Because I thought by the fourth round, I thought he would be over, but he stepped it up. You, you put it on him in the second and third. I put it you on him. So I thought I was tendering him up, you know what I'm saying? So for the fourth round, he just switched it up. Inside coming on, coming on strong, he bust my nose. I kept it going. I thought I'll catch him with one of those right hands, and it would do him. But every time he got wobbled, he managed to hold, like, to hold on. You told me in an interview previously that the uppercut is your favourite shot, but that right round the guard tonight, that was landing all the time. Do you know why? Because I don't know if he's watched my fights, but I only landed uppercut like twice. So, yeah, man, it's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey. Your first six rounder, you can now go and fight for titles. Yeah. What? Where on your journey are you in the title search? Um, I wanted a sub in area, but after that performance, we're gonna go and because the sixth round, the way he came back in the fourth, it was a big, it was a big change. So we need to work on it. So what did you learn from that? I learned that I'm, I'm really, I'm not disappointed, but I'm unhappy with the performance. So for me, I just need to. I was patient. I don't, I'll, I'll, we'll figure it out. I think it was a very mature performance. You didn't rush in, you didn't do anything stupid, even when he was goading you. You softened him up, but he didn't go. I mean, that's yeah, boxing. But I know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, to, I'm the man. I have to be the man when I get in there. And, uh, fair play to him, man. Fair play. So what's next? A little bit of time off, or are you going to be going for another fight soon? As? I'll be back in the gym, talk to my coach. We'll see, watch the tape, see what I, what, what I need to step work on, and we'll be back stronger than ever. Jeffy, congratulations. Yeah.